you know, you really do need to be passionate about what you're doing because it's that passion that you're going to need to draw on um, when things, you know, do get a little tougher or you're having some bad weeks or days. Um, I think it is that passion that kind of pushes you through. We spend a lot of time on Dirty Linen talking to people who work in restaurants. They are deeply embedded in the hospitality industry. But of course, there are so many ancillary industries that hospitality wouldn't run without. Our guest today is Felicity Rogers. Felicity runs Cargo Crew. If you've been in a restaurant and seen the staff wearing incredibly smart aprons, they are very likely to have been hers. Felicity, welcome to Dirty Linen. Uh, Thanks for having me, Danny. Great to be here. Really good to be, um, yeah, to be chatting to you. I have some of your aprons hanging on my special apron hooks in the kitchen. (laughs) Good to hear. (laughs) Very good to hear. Give I'm us glad that they've found a place in that in that special place in your kitchen. They definitely have. Uh, give us the little the one hundred and one on Cargo Crew. What is the company all about? Um, well, Cargo Crew is um, the home of the modern uniform. So I guess um, whilst we've kind of just already kicked off our conversation about aprons, and I definitely think that Cargo Crew is absolutely known for our aprons. Um, we do, you know, design and offer um, a complete uniform collection at Cargo Crew. So I guess the one on one, the one hundred and one is that we really just are very passionate about creating uniforms, you know, that that people want to wear um, and that staff feel great in. So I guess. Um, you know, the, at the infant stage of our business, we were very just focused on hospitality um, and, hence, um, and hence our focus on the apron. However, yeah, we've really built um, a full offering now as it relates to uniforms and, you know, really wanting to support businesses and brands to make sure that, you know, the uniform is such an integral part, I suppose, of how, you know, staff are presented, how they feel at work and how they're, you know, um, delivering a service to to customers. So um, the cargo crew, yeah, the cargo crew aim is to really just get people feeling good in uniform you know, um, helping create a really beautiful visual um, aesthetic for for businesses. Uh, And that's really what we're passionate about. So that really comes from that place of um, bringing together design, quality and service as well. So give us a sense of how Cargo Crew started and how it's grown. Yeah, well, um, it's definitely not an overnight success. I think a lot of people feel that or, or hear of Cargo Crew and think, oh, seems like a young business, never heard of it, or, you know, they've just come, you know, come to know it recently. But um, I actually launched Cargo Crew in 2002. Um, so it's been a real journey. I um, I studied fashion at RMIT. So, um, you know, I always had a real passion for design um, and creativity. Um, so basically studied fashion and then I worked in fashion PR for one year um, and then post that I started a fashion label with a girlfriend from university Um, and it was actually during that time that we um, used to get approached by businesses asking us to help create a uniform um, you know for their businesses and and I just really enjoyed the experience of that I really loved working with you know small businesses and brands um, and kind of applying you know I suppose my design expertise um, to a uniform concept. So um, I had the label for about five years with um, with my friend um, and we used to do um, Melbourne Fashion Festival and, you know, we had amazing opportunities. But the reality of, of growing a small independent fashion label from scratch, it was, you know, it's, an, it's a very challenging industry. It was then and it still is now. Um, and so after five years, we decided to um, finish that up. And so I decided to go out on my own um, and really focus on using that experience that I'd had in design and, and apparel and fashion and bring that to, um, yeah, to the uniform market. So I guess at that time as well, I was really looking at what was out in the market as far as uniforms. Um, and I really felt that people who were in the business of providing uniforms were doing it from a place of a very generic offering. It was like, you know, I didn't feel that there was a, a brand that really had, you know, a soul and a kind of, you know, real design um, and desire to bring that kind of fashion element to uniform. So I really set out wanting to create that feeling that um, Cargo Crew was a brand and it was it was an intentional brand that wanted to dress people in workwear and uniforms um, and really bring that design um, and passion element to that. So um, that's how it all started. And what's the scale of the business now? 
Um, well, I guess if, you know, reflecting back, um, giving a little bit more context. So when I started um, back in 2002, it was from um, my home office, um, which was actually a small lounge room in a, in a flat that my um, husband and I lived in in Clifton Hill. Um, and I started with a $2,000 tax return. Um, which I had um, received from having the fashion label. Um, and today, you know, we're over a $20 million um, business. So um, certainly um, a bit of a growth from a $2,000 tax return to where we are today. Um, we also employ around 60 people. Um, so obviously it's gone from being just myself um, to becoming a real family operation, which I, you know, can talk about a little bit more as far as the story and the journey. Um but also, I suppose, just kind of reflecting back even more and just that original connection with um, with hospitality. One of the early memories that I have is um, is when Federation Square was being built in Melbourne and there was an article in the paper about Paul Mathis opening transport and taxi and chocolate Buddha at the time. And um, I remember, um, you know, calling the restaurants that he, that he already owned that weren't, you know, obviously those places weren't open yet and trying to get a contact you know, directly in with him um, and trying to contact him and saying, I really want to design your uniforms. Um, and that that whole precinct was delayed, I think, by about a year. So I, I think I spent all of that time, you know, following him up um, saying, can I come and meet you? Can I talk about uniforms? And um, yeah, so that was one of the first projects that set off this kind of um, passion for working with, you know, restaurateurs and um, hospitality leaders and um, being part of that journey of creating a uniform for their space. So pretty amazing. That is amazing. Um, it's uh, Paul Mathis was mentioned on a recent podcast when we chatted um, to Cameron and Alexis, who now run a coffee shop in Barcelona. And uh, Cameron started working at Blue Train, one of those really formative businesses that Paul Mathis had. Um, so I'm starting to feel like we need to get Paul on the podcast because he keeps coming <laughs> you, up. But you totally should. He was such. I mean, and he's it's such a visionary. And and I think about that time even when I. First first like you know met him and I was trying to explain to him you know that um I really could bring something different you know to um helping him create the uniforms that that he really desired and I think what he saw in me was just this kind of like real passion for wanting to work and collaborate together and he was like Felicity I think you're going to do a great job at this let's go and um you know and I think so him backing me as a small individual and um and also supporting at that time the local production everything that I that I did back in the original days was was made in Melbourne all the patterns and you know fabric bought locally and manufactured in Melbourne so um that was a really interesting time to start and work very locally on the ground as well. So what do you think a, a good uniform does for a business? Why is it important? Well, um, I mean, obviously, um, I'm a big advocate <laughs> for uniforms and um, and the power that they have. Like, I think, I think, like, obviously, if if somebody feels good, then they're going to um, they're going to deliver uh, a better experience for um, a customer. So whether that's in a restaurant or a retail environment or at an event, if someone feels good in what they're wearing then they're going to be um, more likely to deliver a great experience for the customer. And ultimately, I think that is the real power of what clothing and a uniform can bring. Um, obviously, um, as a business, we are very focused on design and visual language. And I think we talk a lot about the power of presentation. And I think the uniforms have that ability to really transform that visual um, kind of appearance, you know, whether it's for a, for a restaurant or a venue, um, and also just really unite the people who are working there on the floor, making it very easy, obviously, for, for customers to be able to identify them. Um, but also, I think it's also about the, the venue or the restaurant, you know, setting a tone that they they kind of want to invest in quality across all the touch points. So, you know, everything that's considered, that's visual has been considered. Um, so for me, I think that, you know, the power of the uniform is being part of that, that visual um, language, um, being a key touch point, customer facing. Um, and as I said, I think then that tra being transferred and um, transferring for how an individual actually feels. So I think all of those things are, are really powerful. Um, and I guess our job um, as a uniform, you know, designer and provider is to ensure that the uniforms not only look great, but they're also built for purpose. Um, and I guess that kind of stems back to, 
you know, that real passion for wanting to create a product that not only looks great, but really is, is functional and there to, to do a job. Um, so that's something that I think as a business um, and as a team, we are really focused on and, and really put our energies into. So what kind of, um, what are you talking about? Like, what are some of the things that you do when you create a uniform that you think does make it fit for purpose? What, what might I not notice when I just, when I think, oh, they look smart, but what am I not saying? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we'll start with aprons because obviously they are a, they are a hero piece of ours. And I think about, um, you know, I personally am quite apron obsessed. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I guess an apron in, in its true form is, is a practical item. So obviously it should protect the wearer from, you know, from um, obviously the wearer's clothes and things. That's actually its job um, to do that. But there's, there's so much more to it than that. Um, like first and foremost, it does have the ability to set a tone, like for the for a business, or whether that's a color, whether that's the you know the color tone of um, of how we've created the you know the color um, the color palette of what we're offering. Um, there's obviously a big part of any uniform does start with um, fabric quality and construction and composition. Um, and I think you know one of the biggest challenges I think um, being a uniform designer is to want the fabric to be really comfortable, but to also make sure that it does have that durable factor to it. So I guess for us, it always starts with the fabric. So the R&D, what's the weight, you know, what's the composition that's going to give it that, you know, that real durability and that um, that kind of strength um, to last as long as possible in a commercial environment. So how we do that is through things like um testing of fabrics um, in labs, but we also do a lot of wear trials with our product using our network, um, you know, um, so things are actually um, tested in real time in in commercial environments. So it's all the pre-work that goes into it that you shouldn't notice, but that actually makes the difference. Um, And I think from doing this for so many years as well, like we've built up a library of fabrics that we know um, that you know they're tried and tested. We've had feedback, and you know, obviously, customer feedback is always really important to us. So, it's often the unseen things that that you wouldn't think about that makes a great uniform. But definitely, absolutely starts with fabric, um, durability of that, how it feels on the body, um, and then also just really comes down to. Um, you know, those details I was talking about before. So like whether it's eyelets, like what's the size of the eyelets? You know, sometimes, you know, I'll see aprons and I'll think, oh, it just looks like someone's tried to make a cheap, you know, version of one of our aprons or someone else's. And you can just tell the details are not considered. There's no eye for detail. They'll be oversized and, you know, the stitching will be really big and um, and it won't be a, the right tone that matches the fabric well. Like, there is just a lot of, I think, care and design um, that goes into making a good product at the end of the day. And that and that goes for any product in, in any kind of industry. But I think, um, we, you know, that's that's something we are very passionate about. So I guess, you know, with, with uniforms, they have to be appropriate to the business, you know, the, the style, perhaps, you know, the, the impression that you want to give to your customers as well as being practical. Like what kinds of conversations might your people have with venues around what's appropriate for their staff to wear? Yeah, I mean, some some customers and, and venues are very opinionated of the the look that they want to put out there, and they might might be more, um, I suppose, prescriptive on on what they want and and what they're willing to, um, I suppose, invest in as far as a uniform range. So they might decide that they want to keep it very, very tight and very simple um, and and leave it to just one or two styles. Whereas other businesses may say that, can you help us create more of like a wardrobe approach where um, where the individuals um, have, have choice, um, but it still feels that there's a cohesive look. And I think this is something that has definitely um, become more popular in recent years in that I think businesses, um, coming back to the point earlier about wanting people to feel good in the uniform, one of the hardest things that any any uniform designer has is to design one thing that looks good on absolutely everybody. <laughs> you know, it's almost impossible um, besides an apron, which I <laughs> believe that believe that can. Um, but yeah, I think what it's about is about having um, a good a good selection of products that can tie together nicely, deliver a cohesive look for for a brand or a venue. 
um, but also be still um, willing and able to be able to cater for different sizes and shapes and, and individual styles. So I think that can be done well. I also think that should be a collaborative approach that there's also time given to, you know, helping staff, um, you know, with styling advice, you know, how to wear their uniform, how to care for their uniform. It kind of goes beyond just giving them something and saying, this is how I expect it to look. It is also, I believe, a really great thing to be able to engage engage the staff and, and, and get their buy-in to wanting to be part of the, of the look. Um, and supporting the venue in that way. It makes me think of uh, schools and perhaps airline crew where they have this suite of items that people can select uniform from. And I mean, it's particularly important for, you know, I guess gender neutrality as well. And yeah, um, yeah, I mean, what's, how do you approach that? Um, well, yeah, again, like moving with, um, moving with the times and, um, and also feedback from customers and things, we, we are adding quite a few unisex styles to our collection and it does work really well. It just takes a bit of consideration as to execution and how it can be styled to ensure that it can be wor- worn by, you know, all genders without feeling um, ill-fitting. Um, so, yeah, so there's some certain styles that, um, that we've um, added recently, like things like camp shirts, which you know, tend to, be, to tend to be a boxier shape. But, uh, you know, I think that through a fitting process, um, which is something that, you know, we do internally, we will try it on um, different shapes and sizes and different genders to be able to get a feel for how does it sit on the body on all the different people across a whole size curve. Um, and so it's possible. And I think that, um, you know, it's something that we personally you know, really encourage because it does also help venues um, and businesses to manage sizing. So where possible, I think it's a real um, advantage to to doing that. I think it's really just about having choice. Like I think that's the the number one thing. And I think what we offer at Cargo Crew is like we really try and build a foundation of a modern uniform offering that people can kind of pick pieces that can either build these options out Um, but also allow enough room for that kind of individual um, elements that a business is looking for. So I guess for us, it's then like, how's it styled? Is there a custom accessory we make like a a scarf or a tie? You know, is there embroidery? Like how can we bring some customization elements to that as well to make it unique to the customer? Um, And that's something that we're really passionate about as well. Felicity, I I get the feeling that you are much more than a casual observer of the world of food and restaurants. Like, do you have, um, yeah, a a deep and long engagement with with those arenas? Um, Yeah, well, I guess, um, you know, as I've kind of gone on my journey and as you get older, I feel like you reflect more and more about different times in your life that may have impacted you and and you mightn't have even been aware at, aware at the time, but I guess diving back into kind of my younger years, um, you know, my my grandfather was um, so he's my grandparents were English, and my grandfather was um, the head waiter at the Savoy Hotel in London um, in the 1930s, and also my my great uncles used to also work at the Savoy. So when I was growing up, there was a lot of stories about those days that were always shared amongst the family. Um, one of the reasons that my grandparents actually moved to Australia was because um, my grandfather used to actually um, look after Joseph Kennedy, JFK's dad, um, while he was in the UK um, as the ambassador to um, to, to England. Um, and he used to lunch at the Savoy each day. And, and he actually said to my granddad, there's going to be a war, you know, you should leave, take your wife and like leave London. And so my granddad listened to him and they, they left and ended up in Australia. But um, I think those those kind of memories about him working at the Savoy Hotel, what he used to wear, you know, the white server jacket, the black and white pinstripe pants. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like there's an influence there that runs through our veins. And um, so after his, he arrived in Australia, he he did also have um, opened a restaurant with um, with my auntie and uncle and, and my grandmother. So when I was quite young, they had a, a restaurant up in Malden, um, which was a fine dining restaurant probably way ahead of its time. Um, so it was something that, you know, everything was done fresh, you know, local ingredients, all of those things that are, you know, there's the norm these days for, you know, beautiful restaurants, but um, it was probably not quite the right audience at that time um, for the restaurant. Um, it would have been probably early, early 80s. 
um, late seventies. So, um, but yeah, I think hearing all those stories and uh, you know they worked really hard. Like it was, it's a hard business as we all know. Um, but I think beyond that, there's just always been a passion for food and quality in our family. Um, not in a pretentious way, but in a way that like people appreciate food in our family. They appreciate people putting effort in, you know, making something that's presented well and presented nicely um, and then sitting there and, you know, talking about the meal for the next hour. <laughs> um, you know, that's something that's pretty common practice at our, at our family gathering. So I think all of those influences have helped shaped actually where we've landed. So, um, you know, our business is a, at, you know, at its heart is a family business. So um, whilst I started the business um, on my own, um, my sister joined joined me in the business about six years in um, and my husband formally joined a few years after that. So it, there is that absolute like family element, you know, I think how we um, engage as a family more broadly and how we connect to food and making memories I think is is some things we're really passionate about. So, um, and I think the job that we do at Cargo Crew is is to support those moments and memories, you know, through visual, through design, through service. Um, so I think that's how it all ties together, really. If I if I want to be really reflective, yeah, they're beautiful reflections, and that's incredible that that's that's an immigration story that I haven't heard before. Like that's 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 really amazing, um, and I, I hope the pinstripe pants made their way to Malden. I can picture that. Um, <laughs> I know. If only <laughs> if only they had have like bought the um, the building that they had at the time. I think it was like an old, you know. I think there might be an Airbnb or um, small hotel there now. Haven't been back for many years, but yeah, I think they were definitely ahead of their time and also entrepreneurial as well, you know, and I think that kind of inspiration runs a little bit in the family as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So that's an incredible business story and really interesting that you've brought family in along the way. Uh, uh, What sort of lessons do you think you've learnt in your business journey that other businesses might be able to learn from? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess a really um, an area that I'm really passionate about is definitely, um, you know, not compromising on quality of the product. And if you really want long term loyal customers, that's that's something that you really need to focus on. Um, and it takes it's hard work to really ensure that you have consistency, consistency of quality, consistency of experience, all of those things. But I think. That then kind of comes to my second point about, you know, you really do need to be passionate about what you're doing because it's that passion that you're going to need to draw on um, when things, you know, do get a little tougher or you're having some bad weeks or days. Um, I think it is that passion that kind of pushes you through. Um, You know, I guess from, um, from the perspective of what I've really enjoyed about running a business, I do feel that you know, there's so much power in collaboration, you know, working with other like-minded, talented individuals who can bring something, you know, fresh to your business. So I think as far as advice, that's something that I would say to me, I get very inspired about working with other, you know, talented people. Um, And I think any business can look to you know, collaborate with other people, whether that's been, um, you know, in a restaurant, whether it was, you know, bringing in a, um, a specialist um, drinks, you know, mixologist, or um, or having a something on a menu that's um, that's homemade from a local provider. I think collaborating in business is just such a powerful way to offer something different to the customer, but to also um, potentially expand your business into new networks that may come from collaborating with those people. Um, so I guess those kind of things is what. I think has been um, great investments in time and energy. I also think you really need to, as you continue to grow a business, you really need to invest in good systems. Um, Like for us, um, investing in an ERP um, across the business, a CRM and obviously our website, um, in, in, you know, continuing to invest in technology is what ultimately helps us deliver a seamless customer experience. Um, And I think that's important in all businesses. It's like, what are the systems that are going to help support you delivering that seamless customer experience, knowing the next time they come back, what they've purchased from you, you know, understanding that customer need. Um, I think those things are very powerful and important to continue to move, you know, with the times. 
Okay, so I've just Googled ERP while you were speaking because I didn't know what that was. So it's enterprise resource planning um, and CRM. That's like a, it's like a mailing list, isn't it? But it's a fancy mailing list. <laughs> yeah, customer retention and customer relationship management tool. So it's really storing all of the data and the interactions from customers. So I guess, you know, from a like a customer journey perspective, like I was saying before, um, the more that you can understand, you know, about a customer and um, be able to access and, and and kind of follow up, whether it relates to the kind of product that they've bought from you, educating them on any, you know, new releases that you might have that's within that product category, but also making it easy for customers when they do come back to not have to explain to you what they've purchased previously. You know, it's, um, it's a really important part of customer service. So, um, yeah, I guess as it would relate to a restaurant, even I suppose investing in the right you know, booking systems, ordering systems, getting efficiencies where possible. You know, we we went from a stage of literally everything, um, quotes and um, quotes, um, cost sheets, everything being done in in Excel, (laughs) you know, to having to upgrade along our journey. Um, You know, my husband has pretty much built every system that exists in the business today has been really implemented and built by him. He heads up operations and you know, I think you do need that person to focus on, to be focusing on that to help push the business forward. It's almost like you can't continue to go to that next step without having the right supporting systems. Um, and for us, when it was the ERP um, implementation, which we have NetSuite in our system, it, it, it basically meant we had to bring in our warehouse system, our accounts, our accountancy system, everything into one system, which was a huge project for a business of our size. But the efficiencies it's given us now um, and that kind of like, one point of contact, that one point of truth is is what's really good when you're trying to get data or, you know, understand what's going on in the business. So um, from that perspective, I think it's it's good advice. Mm, yeah, we hear again and again from, you know, really um, rigorous hospitality operators that being able to know what's going on in your business is um, definitely the key to, yeah, succeeding in your business. Um, Fel- you know, Felicity, we've been talking a lot on Dirty Linen over the past weeks about, you know, the, the difficult times in hospitality and, you know, how... Um, People are spending less when they dine out, but costs are going up um, every which way. I mean, we know that you know some of these are society-wide pressures. What what are you seeing in your business? Um, I think there's definitely um, a feeling of people putting more consideration into where they're spending their money, um, and and you know just really you know thinking more deeply about the purchases they're making within you know within business i don't um like immediately see um an impact from the broader wider business as it relates to p- potentially like the more corporate and retail groups that we work with but i would say within the smaller business sectors um and we see that more on our online customers um that that segment of the market i think is feeling it more right now and some of their purchasing um, behaviours is slightly changing in the sense that I think whether it's, you know, the size of the orders or the frequency, um, there is, you know, probably some sign that that's, that that's softening a little. Um, I, for our business particularly, one of the upsides, I think, of the way we've been able to build our e-commerce um, platform um, within our business is that we now do really have a um, – a broad rest of world focus. Um, So we're really fortunate that we can also help kind of ride out any softening in the local market um, to continue to to grow um, the international market, particularly the US for us is is our growing focus. Um, And I do see like a like-mindedness there with hospitality and um, and restaurants and their desire to have good uniforms and, and good looking uniforms. They really get it. Um, so yeah, for us, it's, it's continuing to look at who we're servicing, but I would say that there's, there's a softening, um, across the market at the moment. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that you can see many opportunities for cargo crew. Um, I can really see you back, you know, after you had your fashion degree and you were looking after your first uniform client and really loving it. Um, Fast forward to today and here you are with 60 employees. It's a pretty amazing journey, Felicity. Um, What what do you love about what you do? 
Well, I guess like I do absolutely love it. I, I say that with, um, yeah, with total heart. So I guess I don't have to, I suppose it's the design and the creativity that, that I enjoy the most. Um, but I also really, I'm a product person at heart. So I think I love the journey of actually creating something from scratch, focusing on the detail, focusing on the quality, you know, iterating as we get feedback. Um, like I was saying earlier, as an example with, with wear trials, um, when we launched our chef wear, which actually we launched our chef range just at the start of COVID, which wasn't really great timing. Um, but the, the time, you know, the, the work that went into launching the chef range, working with um, a couple of chefs, including Curtis Stone and um, Josh Nyland, who, who both have wear trial product for us at different times and actually having meetings to um, get feedback from them directly. I think it's that that collaboration I absolutely love. I love working with other people who are passionate about every single detail. Um, and, yeah, I think that um, I also get really excited about being involved in, I suppose, businesses who are opening restaurants for the first time, doing a brand refresh. Um, there's always so much energy associated with that and there's that sense of excitement. And I think um, obviously, you know, going to restaurants myself, knowing it's a new venue, you see that the the, the team look great and that you've been part of that. Um, that gives me a real buzz. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot of love for, for that in general in what we do. Oh, so good. Um, you really make me feel like wanting to go and take my apron off the hook, put it on and not only put it on, but also look at myself in the mirror and see how smart I look. So uh, thank, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today, Felicity. And yeah, um, congratulations on what you're achieving at Cargo Crew. Thanks so much, Danny. It's been awesome chatting. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you.